Hi, welcome to Time Valley. And today I'll be showing you the handover on the Tribute T680 panel van. So on the driver's side of the vehicle, this is where you'll hook the vehicle up with your mains hookup lead. So to 240 volt. So lift the collar and slide on and always hook the vehicle up first and the sight as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead in the wet. Next one is your boiler. So your boiler is located behind here, so this is the flue to allow all the fumes from the boiler out. So just make sure this is obstruction free at all times. And then coming further back, you do have your toilet cassette. So this will open with this key here, your cassette locker. And to get your cassette out, as long as the slide on the bottom of the bowl of the toilet is closed, you'll be able to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out like so. You do have a handle to pull it around the site when it's full. And you'd go to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside your showering block, toilet block. Take the cap off, press the orange button and tip away. Once you've tipped all the contents of the cassette out, if you there's normally a tap, put some water in, give it a slush round, give it a clean out and tip out again. And then once you've done that, if you're using the liquid form of the chemical, a cap full of liquid and pour straight into here and it's ready to go back into the vehicle. If you are using the tablet form, you put a pint of fresh water into the cassette, push it back into the vehicle, and then you drop a sachet of the tablet down the toilet into the, and drop it into the cassette by using the blades to open the slide, open the blade, and it will go into the cassette and it's ready to use. Further back, this is your fresh water intake. So I go and get yourself a hose pipe and some hose pipe connections because most sites are just a brass tap and you can lock this take this off and you put your hose pipe in there until it's overflowed or until you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel coming further around the back of the vehicle you've got your reversing camera built into the brake light and you've got your parking sensors on the bottom bumper. And now on the passenger side, so coming down the passenger side, you've got your fuel omnister on in. I'll show you in a second. And next to your passenger door, you do have your diesel filler. So again, opens with the main ignition key. And you can fill with the diesel. The key. So you've got, opens the cab door at the front, locks all the doors and opens the rear doors, so the sliding door and the rear doors. And then here you do have your tyre pressure, so 5 bar on the front which is 72.3 psi and 5.5 and bar on the back which is 79.5 psi. And then coming further down you do have your weight plate from when the vehicle was changed to a panel van, a camper van, so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight and if you were to tow anything you can tow up to a train weight which is the vehicle and whatever you're towing can't exceed six ton you do have your chassis number on there as well underneath the passenger seat is where you'll find your tool kit so you've got a jackknife brace, a tow eye so anything to change your wheel will be towed away and underneath the floor is where you'll get main access to your engine battery so this is only for if you need to take it out and um, replace the battery or put a charger on but there is jump points from underneath the bonnet and your bonnet release is on the passenger side of the dashboard and then if you use your second catch to lift the bonnet so to release the bonnet you then have your various liquids so you put your brake fluid your coolant so your radiator fluid this cover lifts off and also next to it is your power steering fluid which you can fill from the top by lifting the cover off and the main one you're going to need is your screen wash for your washer jets you've got your oil filler and your oil dipstick down here the red 
dipstick for checking your levels before you go away and you do have your paint code there for the Grigio aluminium paint so that's a standard fade colour so you can get that from any fade dealership and then if you were to ever jump start the vehicle you'd earth your positive your negative so your black jump lead on here and your positive would go onto here so this covers normally down you'd put your key in the side of it to lift it up and then you'd put your red jump lead onto that for giving or receiving a jump start so now in the vehicle i will go through the main control panel first which is here and then i'll show you how to operate your truma digital control panel which operates your heating and hot water so to turn the panel on you press this button here which is the on button this will either give you mains power and indicate that you are hooked up like we are now or you will just be using the 12 volt off the leisure battery above you've got the b1 which is battery one on the truck which is your fiat engine battery and b2 which is battery two which is your leisure battery and this gives you the reading above you do have your water so this is your fresh water indication which says it's 33 percent full out of 100 percent and then down here you've got the temperature of the in and outside and above that again you do have your light so this is your master switch for all your interior lights then they all are individually switched around the vehicle and above you've got the light on the side of the van which is your awning light which is just located above the sliding cargo door and you've got your pump your pump must be on to use any taps in the vehicle so shower hand basin sink toilet and obviously if you don't have any water on board don't put your pump on and then to operate your truma digital control panel if you press and hold and it'll turn on and you'll get this screen here so then if you press ok and it'll enter the menu so here you do have the van with the thermometer in so you can go all the way to off so this is how to heat the vehicle off for all the way to 30 degrees once you're happy with the temperature if you just press enter this pre-saves that setting to what temperature you've set the vehicle to next week you've got the thermometer and water this is your hot water so you've got off if you've got no water on board eco which is about 50 degrees hot which is about 70 degrees and you've got boost boost will prioritize the water from the heating so if you've got the heating and hot water turned on together boost will turn the heating off to heat the water moving on you've got the gas and the electricity symbol so this is what source you're heating the vehicle off so it would be gas if you are well camping and you didn't have 240 volt on board you've got a mixture of one kilowatt of electric and gas you've got a mixture of two kilowatts of electric and gas together so you'd use this in the winter if it was cold or you were in desperate need to heat the vehicle or the water and then you've got electric on one kilowatt which you'd probably use a broader on smaller sales sites but on most camping and caravan clubs across the uk you can use electric on two kilowatts if you hooked up and you've paid your site fees you'll not want to waste your gas so for this we'll just say a mixture of gas and electric moving along you've got the fan so you've got eco or high so if you're well camping you'd use eco because it doesn't take a bigger feed off the 12 volt or you'd use high if you wanted the fans to kick in and blow the heat around the various parts of the vehicle moving down you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off you've got the the clock here so this is the time displayed on the main control panel and if you've got a warning triangle in the middle you can go to the spanner in the corner and go down to reset and press and hold and this will reset the boiler and again to turn off you just press and hold and this control panel isn't flickering it is just the camera located underneath the rear traveling seats is where you will find your truma boiler this boiler holds 10 liters of water at any one time in the winter or when you're not using the vehicle but especially in the winter when you winterize the vehicle so you open the fresh you open the waste you open the boiler drain and allow all the water out the vehicle because any water stored in the vehicle when it when it is potentially could freeze will split pipes and 
tanks and will damage the boiler and it is very expensive to replace a boiler which isn't covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down correctly so to drain the boiler down you've got this automatic anti-freeze drain tap which is your frost control it will drain down and automatically drain at three degrees but I wouldn't rely on it so to drain it down manually this diamond here on the top the little pin will pop up and this button at the bottom will pop out like so you see the little nib has popped out and the button at the bottom's out so this is draining the 10 litres directly underneath the chassis and then once you want to reuse the vehicle if you turn the diamond so it's across the van the nib pushes back in and then push the button in you can then fill the vehicle with water put the pump on and go to the cold side first you'll get automatic cold water go to the hot it'll cough split and what it's doing is it's drawing the fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then once you get a steady flow on one tap do them all but when winterizing if you also use or leave the shower head off so take the shower head off the hose and lie that in the shower tray and leave all the mixer taps in the open position this stops any air locking the current and also underneath here you do have your leisure battery location so that's where your leisure battery is and underneath this small flap here you've got your main trip on 240 volt electric when hooked up And to extend your table in your lounge area, if you just pull the lever down and slide the extension worktop out, this gives you a bigger dining space when the front passenger and driver seats are turned around. Located underneath the driver's seat is a battery isolation switch, which is this key here. So you can isolate the 12 volt leisure battery in the winter. And you do have your various 12 volt fuses which run off the leisure battery for your various items such as your pump, your side marker lights, your lights, your, your tap pumps, your heating fan. So it would be a good idea to go and buy some spare blade fuses and just keep them in the vehicle in case one does blow you can replenish the fuse and fix your fault. In the kitchen area you do have two gas rings which you can light like so when you have a gas bottle on and then underneath you've got your oven and grill so you can light your oven oven and then your grill So if you haven't had the gas on for a while and the vehicle's been stood, if you always bring it through on the hob first, this is the best place to bring it as it's the highest point. Tear your oven shelves out when you're driving as you'll notice this will rattle around. And once you've used the hob, make sure that you have allowed the hob to cool down before you put the glass lids down. And you've got a storage drawer underneath. And then above, you do have your cutlery tray. To open the cupboards, if you just push the catch in below or behind the lever and lift up. And then you've got a key here, which locks and opens the drawers on the side of the kitchen area there. And in here you do have your gas isolation taps so these are mainly for our habitation. No, that's so sorry your gas isolation taps aren't in the top drawer. They're actually the wardrobes here and the fridge. They're just in this little cubby hole. So there your red taps are your gas isolation taps. So any problems with gas turn off at the top of the bottle. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced to check that the gas is working correctly to all appliances so this is how to operate your 
Dometic fridge. So you've got three sources. So we're off at the minute. If you were hooked up, you could go at the plug, which is this one here. And this is mains to 40 volt. So if you are at home and you are lucky enough to keep this compact vehicle at home, hook it up a couple of days before and put it on to uh, mains power and allow the fridge to get chilled with your shopping in. And then when you do start driving, you can put it on to, and the engine is running, you can put on the battery. This isn't from the leisure battery, this is from the engine battery alternator when the vehicle is in motion. So this is just to keep your shopping fresh on your journey. So if it's half an hour or a couple of hours, your shopping should stay nice and fresh. Moving down to the gas. So if you're wild camping, you'd be running everything off gas, so the heating, the cooking, the fridge, so you'd go down the gas, and then this is your temperature, so you'd hold your temperature in, and press the piezo igniter, and then you'll see the orange band will go into the green. So let's go away there now. It does take us some time if you haven't used, if the vehicle has been standing or hasn't been used in a while. Um, always bring it through on the hob first, like I've said. So now in your washroom, your sink slides along this rail here so you can have it wherever you want it. And the light switch is just on the little rocker switch here. You've got storage. And then operate your fed for toilet. Make sure the pump's on and you can press this green button here and it will flush the toilet like so. And then open the blade. If you just use this grey lever and push it to the right, this opens the blade and deposits your waste in the cassette. So you'd always use the toilet with the cassette blade open. Then you'd flush and then you'd shut the blade to conceal the smells. Again, this must be shut to get the cassette out the exterior of the vehicle and then when you know it's full, this little icon here, the wheel will go red as an indication that the cassette is full. You've got your toilet roll holder, you've got your shower screen, or should I say a curtain, which will clip into here and conceal the toilet from getting wet. Good. You have your tap. <laughs> and operate your tap. Your tap works from this mixer tap here. So if this is pulled out, the tap will work. If it's pushed in, your shower head will then work like so. So again, like I've said, if you loosen this off and allow this shower hose to lie in the shower tray when you're not using the vehicle and especially when you're winterizing it allows any water to not freeze or go stagnant in the bends of the pipe. At the back of the vehicle you've got your cupboards which I've showed you how to open by pushing beneath and lifting up. You've got this skylight which you just turn and it lift the skylight all skylights and blackout, all skylights and windows must be closed when traveling. And then you do have your blackout blind, which just clips in like so. So pull it along and then tuck it in, clip it in, and then that is shut for on a night time. Underneath this bed here, which is on the driver's side rear, so if you lift that up, underneath here is your onboard water tank. So to drain the fresh water tank, which is here, so you can get in and access it by, by taking the red cap off and you put your pump. To drain it off, there is no drain outside for the fresh water. It is an internal drain. You'd use this blue stick and open. So if you turn in line with the van, like here, it's closed. If you turn it to 
the driver's side it is open and this will drain your water off so this is one of your drains when winterizing or if you've taken on any contaminated water or you're just not using the vehicle and you want to drain it down this is your drain tap i'll show you your waste from outside now and your waste you drive you'd normally drive over a grid um on the way out of a site and just pull this lever it is on the passenger side just behind the sliding cargo door and again you just push pull that and it'll drain off there so that's just the water we've been testing the vehicle with <laughs> so to operate your fuel on mr Ornan, if you get your winding handle and place it at the front into here and then wind the awning out to make it inside of the canopy out there and then you've got two legs inside the canopy so if you just push they're on a spring loaded spring slide them down get this tab this is your telescopic leg so adjust it to the height you want and then pull the tab up you might think you're going to break it as it's plastic you're not so just lift them up And then you can peg the feet, but do take in mind wind speeds over 15 mile an hour, the awning can't be used. So wind and awnings don't mix, they will damage your vehicle or someone else's next to it. So take it in when you go out or when you go to bed or if you get any sign of wind. And then on here on the front, you have your C rail, so it's built in. So this is where you get a drive away kit, which you'll be able to attach a drive away air on two and give extra room on the vehicle so to put the legs away just in reverse you just loosen it off hold the leg in make sure that this little foot lies flat with the front of the awning push in and clip in like so And then you'd be able to wind it back in. Once you've it in, you just turn ever so slightly the winding handle and it will come out if it's got stuck. So at the back, on the driver's side, so your water tank's here. This is where your gas is, so LPG, liquid petroleum gas, your gas locker. So you can fit two six kilogram gas bottles in there. So once you've got the bottle in, if you always tie it in with the straps provided, and then to get the pigtail on the bottle, it is just a left hand thread, hand tighten and turn off and on at the top of the bottle. So when traveling, always turn it off, and then you can turn it back on when you are on your site. So you use the windows on the vehicle, you just press the red buttons in and pull the levers out. This will then push the window out and push it all the way out to bring it back in. And always make sure these and the skylights are shut before you do travel. And then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen on all windows and skylights. And your doors, to make your doors go from to 90 degrees, you push, push the button in and fold the door back. There is stoppers behind here so it won't hit the, the lights and damage any paintwork or your rear lights. So to operate your TV, once you have turned it on by pointing the remote down to that green or red LED light, every time you move site you will have to retune the TV and to do so you press menu, go down to channel and you want to do an auto search on DTV because ATV analog doesn't exist anymore so DTV and press enter yes and it'll find as many channels as I can in your area and located in this cupboard here in the corner so these are your silver screens for your windscreen so they just stick on to the side windows and the windshield which I'll show you 
and then you do have your max u tv booster there so you can use the the wheel the black wheel you can boost or weaken should the signal be too strong once you've tuned the tv in you'll get a signal but if you require a dvd you can go to source and go down to dvd or other various connections on this tv but you can go all the way down to dvd and you can put a dvd in the side of the tv like so and then you've got a bracket here so always to make the double arm bracket come out you've got to lift this up to release the top bracket and then make sure it's pushed in before you travel off so it's secure so now in your cab you have your handbrake down to your right you've got your electric windows an electric mirror adjustment for the top and the blind spot you just move the, the, the joystick to which mirror you want to adjust you've got your fog lights and your headlight adjustments and then you can go into more to change your date and time should you ever get a flat battery and you might have to change the date and time again you've got your trip computer on the on the end of the wiper stalk which goes through here and shows you your instant consumption your average consumption your range your traveling times and so on and then you do have your, your volume and your mute this will scroll through your contacts or your radio stations and then you've got hands free lights and your indicators and obviously you can pull back for main beam or you can just flash and then you do have your cruise control at the top off in the middle and then your speed limiter so you can set it so you won't go over a set speed or if the speed limiter is on you can push right down on the accelerator and if you push right down it will discontinue the speed limiter and you'll be able to get yourself out of a situation You've got a six-speed manual gearbox with lift the collar and up for reverse, which will bring your rear view camera on. You've got heel descent control, which is pretty much useless on a manual. It's more for an automatic, so that doesn't work. You've got your traction control, turning it off, hazards, locks the doors, all of them with it being a panel fan, and you've got your heated mirrors. You've got USB for charging here and a 12 volt. And you've got a USB and an auxiliary input for the radio. And you turn the radio on. So once it will come on, you've got your radio got your media which will be your connections here and you've got your phone so you press phone it'll come up pair a device you press enter and it'll press find you connect and you find you connect on your device press pair press pair on here and then it'll ask you if you want to download your contacts press yes and then that is the vehicle paired to your phone and then below you do have your Temperature, your fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is in the middle. And then you do have your distribution and your recirculation. Got a glove box here and a glove box on the top, which is heated and cooled by the air conditioning and heating. And then to black it out, like I've said, your suction cups with the the silver screens on the inside of the vehicle to black out the side windows and the main windscreen.